and welcome to Deeply Rooted. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I am so glad that you're here with me. Each day I try to be mindful that life really does have its ups and downs, and I just want to offer a space where we can know that even in the midst of all of that, You are loved, and I am loved. And we really are spiritual more than physical. And that we have these human experiences that I really hope that we can do our best to somehow find peace and joy in the midst of it. And I know from my experience that the best way to do that is together. Delight, aspire, wish. The world is before you. Wilma Rudolph says, Never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. How much of your time do you spend dreaming? And what is your opinion about taking the time to breathe or to dream? Does your life choke out the value of dreaming? What do you think about those who dream? What is that one dream that you can't seem to let die. Is there some aspect of the dream you can pursue now? What about six months from now? So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I mentioned in a prior podcast that I am back to being in a Montessori classroom in what we call the outdoor environment. And so I've been doing a lot of research on new books that really encourage us to get outside more. And a book that I came across from our local library is called Born to be Wild. Hundreds of Free Nature Activities for Families by Hattie Garlick. And she offers 10 tips for turning your kids out of the house happily. Number one is take sustenance. Getting caught in a wood or a park for anywhere or anywhere really beyond a 10 step radius of your kitchen without an emergency packet of raisins, breadsticks, Sarnies or the occasional Kit Kat is a grievous error. Sugar is the devil, sure, but sometimes it's better the devil you know that will keep your kid walking all the way back to the car than the devil you know will emerge within him when tired tantrums hit. Same goes for drinks. If you're leaving the house for more than one hour, a thermos in winter and a water bottle in summer are essential. Number two, stay warm and dry. Number three, beware of competing toys and technology. Nature's appeal is powerful but subtle. You can't really ask it to compete with an iPad or plastic toys. It's not a fair fight. So leave all that stuff behind when you venture out. 
Otherwise, you risk being mesmerized by nature while your child is hypnotized by YouTube. Books, though, are always a good idea. Pack one to read aloud to small children under the trees, or for older children to open themselves in a rare oasis of calm. If it's one about nature, so much the better. Number four, be flexible. You may have fixed ideas about educational exploration of an anatomy of a dandelion, but if your child, or the child with you, wants to pound it into a pulp with a potato smasher instead before smearing it across a piece of colored paper, you must abandon your plan immediately unless you want to drive yourself completely and irreparably insane. Number five, three is a crowd, but in the best way possible. The more kids you herd up for each outdoor adventure, the merrier and longer their fun will be and the less chivian will be required. <laughs> Number six, never underestimate kids. It can be scary watching the center of your world disappear wobbing, wobble, wobblingly, wobblingly <laughs> into the highest branches of a tree or wielding a big stick in his small hand. Sensible precautions must always be taken, but remember, your children are more capable and creative than most people give them credit for. Number seven, don't be too ambitious. It's an equally big mistake to ask too much of your family. Young children have short legs and sometimes short attention spans. So a bit of planning is required. Ask a four-year-old to walk miles along a dull path before the fun even begins, and you will have only yourself to blame when the meltdown ensues. Number eight, forget perfect. We're not aiming for polished or perfect here. Whether it's a raft built from sticks, a den or a quill pen, the finished product really is beside the point. Without wanting to sound too much like a hippie, it's about the journey, man. Number nine, collect. Everything in life can be improved simply by incorporating a treasure hunt into it. Every time you leave the house, you are on a mission to uncover the most beautiful, most bizarre, shininess, and brightest natural object. When you find it, pocket it and add it to a de dedicated display when you get home. A window ledge, a shelf, a fireplace swept of the usual household uh, uh, detriments will do nicely. Remember to collect responsibly. And number 10. Have fun together. One of the greatest things about nature and one of the things that sets it apart from almost all the activities, toys, TV shows, and theme parks is that it doesn't come with an age-appropriate sticker slapped on it. It's for everyone. Muck in together. Marvel at its delightful or disgusting features with one another. And make the most of the magic that happens in each other's company. Today's writing prompt is remember the sound. This segment just has to do with taking some time to either think on a phrase or a sentence. Um, you can either write it or you can just take it into your meditation time. Here are my thoughts on that topic. Remember the sound. The cuckoo clock that hangs in my living room has become like a second heartbeat. I hear it sometimes and other times it fades into the background. I feel comforted when I hear it. The tick-tock and song that plays on the top of an hour. The clock was created in Germany. My birthplace. I still remember when we bought it. The three of us together on a mission to find a clock to bring home with us. In and out of clock shops. Who knew there were so many styles, sounds, tones? We have a few very special pieces associated with sound and with our marriage. 
Our first Christmas together, he bought me a beautiful chime, and we promised it would always hang at the foot at the front door. It was ruined by the weather conditions in Colorado. My mother-in-law bought me a chime on one of my birthdays. We hang it on our door to ring as we enter and exit the house. We bought an advent calendar at the same time as... No, that's not right. He bought one and sent it home for Christmas. She has had it since she was five. It's getting old now. She's 16. And the heat of our Arizona home has not been kind to the glue of the figurines, but it still plays the music box. She says she wants it when we die. We should have taken better care of it. So for the year 2022, I decided I wanted to share um, some insight of what I do every day as a mom, a wife, a creative entrepreneur, and I still hold a part-time job. So it has been 14 years since I have been running my own business, and I thought that this would be very helpful for those of you who maybe have considered doing it or look at the way I do it and think, oh, she just has it, she's just so seamless. <laughs> I wanted to give you a little insight that it really does take, um, even if it's a little bit a day, it really is something that um, it takes effort and it takes a decision. So here we go, January 8th and 9th. I had to fight through a lot of haze in my ability to bring together my why of doing treasure maps in the classroom, other than the students were talking about it. But slowly the ideas started to unfold. Sea glass near beaches. Does Antarctica have beaches? Could we look for sea glass in Antarctica? Where would we find sea glass? Next phase is a scavenger hunt for animals found in Antarctica using tube animals, clipboards, and a checklist. The animals will be housed in glass containers so as not to get lost. I still need to figure out an effective way to hide sea glass or find some rocks and place them around the playground. The alphabet movement cards and magnifying glasses are being added as well as out in our outdoor library, as well as an outdoor library. And the indoor classroom lead teachers will be adding things as well. January 10th. I heard the words of my mentor from my Reggio classroom this morning. You will be able to walk into a place and know it has good bones. As I continue to slowly let my mind visualize an intention for the outdoor classroom, the process slowly comes together. I found a magazine rack that matches the benches for a library area. This morning I woke up thinking, the snack table needs a tablecloth. And while I'm still trying to figure out how to dress and how to work with my hair outside, <laughs> I have every desire to want to embrace it. January 11th. I was pleasantly surprised when I went to work yesterday and saw that the lead teachers had recognized, uh, reorganized the outdoor classroom. It was really beautiful. And with the things I wanted to add in, the classroom has transformed to a really great environment. I completed the PDF version of the January journal kit and it's been posted on Etsy. And I wanna make a form of it for teen girls and a freebie to access with an email option.
My husband sent a link about the downside of tiny, tiny homes. And previously the night before, I remembered friends who lived in a house that was 750 square feet and mentioned maybe we should consider that instead. Then I randomly checked, and this, this size of homes are still available for a reasonable price here in Apache Junction. So this idea is really exciting. January 12th. A delightful surprise in ODE when the students really engage with the MAP project. Day one with crayons and no instruction. Day two, add markers and invite them to draw a big oval. What about a house? What about trees? Should we add water? What types of things do we find in water? Boats? Pirate ships? What else could we add? Cars? One says, a rainbow. Another says, swings. What about mountains? Animals? Day three, invitation to cut around the edges and paint in a brown tone. Day four and five, treasure hunt for sea glass in the sensorial bin or on the playground if possible. We are going for buying a two bedroom house. Well, as we come to the end of our podcast, I just wanna say thank you so much for coming by, for sharing in uh, my love of stories about Montessori and creativity and the meaning of life. And if you have been enjoying these podcasts, I truly hope that you are sharing it. And if you would like to support the work that I do, you can sponsor my podcast or you can go and check out my website where I have lots of things creative um, to encourage and inspire you. I just recently launched an art journal kit. I also have creativity books and journals for you to work through. And I have sewing kits. So if any of these things should delight and encourage you, I would be honored to serve you with these products. Thanks so much for stopping by.